Domestic violence, you, you must hear it all the time to stop um, dads from seeing their kids. Well, that's not the only sort of allegation. What about sexual abuse? Mm. It's very easy for the mother to, to say and very difficult for the father to disprove. Domestic violence has become a fast track to divorce. An awful lot of solicitors internationally will say to women, claim that he hit you because this means that you'll get everything. And then the second thing, if that doesn't work fast enough, they call it the silver bullet in Canada. That means that she claims that he's molested the children. And that means that he's immediately then barred from everything and the divorce goes straight through and he loses his children and he will never see them again. Fathers are often falsely accused of child sexual abuse by women seeking custody of a child and to ensure punishment for the man she no longer loves. Divorce cases, custody cases, we're seeing more and more and more of that where the woman wanting to get full custody of the child is suddenly out of the blue making allegations that the father has abused the child and is coaching the child to stay the same, to say the same. When you talk to the child, however, and they cannot describe the sounds, the tastes, the smells, and all of that, you can start to, to know that they've been coached because they're just parroting words. But it's so destructive both to the child. I, I, I have no, no patience at all with parents who use that, with the mothers who use that as an allegation against fathers to keep them from their children. I think that is wicked. Does it only tend to be that one way? Mothers it does fathers? tend to be, yes. We have, I, I, I don't know of any cases, there may be some, where the father is alleged abuse by the mother to get custody of the child. In your experience, how many of the allegations of abuse or violence are substantiated? Well, I think that's a very difficult question. I would think probably not a lot. The list of false allegations of rape in the media is long. Here, a court has heard how a professional footballer, Terrell Forbes, and five other aspiring players subjected a 15-year-old girl to a horrendous 24-hour ordeal in which she was repeatedly raped and assaulted. In a completely separate case, police said this afternoon the Arsenal footballer, Graham Stack, has been charged with raping a young woman at his home in London. A chap in Minehead um, who were, was working at Butlins and uh, this girl accused him of raping her. I spoke to the mother, you know, the mother of the chap. And uh, anyhow, the, the girl admitted, she said, no, I made it all up, but a bit too late because he'd hung himself. For a start, off, I don't actually understand blokes that do rape women, OK? It's, it's a discuss I, I can't even imagine what they've got to be animals. So can you imagine being accused of doing that and everybody's believing it and, and even perhaps when you're clear there's, oh, you know, fit, is, and you've got your name in the papers and it usually seems to take about a year or two years before it all comes to court. What do you do in that two years when, you, when if you're a teacher, you, you, you're suspended from school or you're sacked during that time? So you, you can't find work because nobody's going to employ you and all your, all your neighbours are aware that you're up on a rape charge. So you regard rape as not an ordinary crime to be accused of? Not equivalent to...? Oh, no, I'd sooner be accused of nicking something than that, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and if I hadn't nicked it, I, I wouldn't want to be accused of rape. That could, well, that could destroy everything, couldn't it? It could destroy your, your family life as well. You see them in the newspapers, blokes get their names splattered about on rape charges, um, and then they suddenly find out, well, no, actually, there was no case because she made it all up. We had foster girls here, uh, and I know one or two of those used to make out they'd been assaulted in the streets because they'd, be, they'd got back late, you see. They, so rather than be told off for of getting back late, they'd make out, yeah, one of them, she had the police running all around the, the town of Wells looking for this bloke that assaulted her. There was no bloke at all. He didn't exist. She told us. Well, I was getting back late, so I made up that some bloke got me. Many women actually just love to see themselves as victims of abuse. It is a badge of honour which they wear with pride. Women have also been indoctrinated to see almost anything that men do as some form of abuse. 
studies, for example, in America, such as one by Cannon, who investigated very closely um, 109 forcible rapes somewhere in the state of Indiana, a small town in Indiana, discovered that out of those 109 alleged forcible rapes, 45 were false allegations. Some 40% of women eventually retracted and changed their minds about what had happened to them. So what you don't do is you don't put yourself in a situation where you're in a car alone with a woman that you don't know at all or in a lift alone with a woman that you don't know at all because there's always that danger. Reinterpretation of a sexual encounter is not rape. Claiming rape and then having consensual sex with someone else later that evening puts the lie to rape. Claiming to have withdrawn consent during sex, but not getting around to mentioning it to the alleged rapist is not rape. An invented sexual encounter is not rape. Consenting sex that only becomes rape when he doesn't call her the next day is not rape. Yet all of these gems have reached jury trial in the UK and the US. The real power of rape lies in the accusation. The truth of the matter is irrelevant. Evidence is irrelevant. The accusation is everything. Women can freely accuse men of rape with little fear of consequence. I guess it's, it's, it's a horror you can only know once you've actually gone through it. I know that, that, that at any point in somebody could come forward and say he raped me and I, I would automatically be in trouble. I would automatically then have to find, it's not a matter of saying, well, I didn't do it. I would have to then find a way to prove I didn't do it. It's going to be really difficult. And anybody can say it about me. Often, the reasons for women crying rape are laughable. Laughable to everyone, that is, apart from the accused man. Women will lie about rape to explain their pregnancies. Women will lie about rape to get compensation. Women will lie about rape to get a payoff from a celebrity. Women will even lie about rape if they're not satisfied in bed.